Rocky. It's the Rule and Ryan Show. Don't forget, in just about an hour from now, the Rapid Fire Quiz. This is going to be interesting because we're doing some people from Zoom. We've been kind of like losing connections back and forth, but I know for a fact that I've got Special K as a uh, contestant. Yes. I've got Ahmad. I'm thinking we're going to bring Irvin in, too, who and, does our social media. Yeah, he's new to the show, and all of those awesome social posts that you see all come from him. And we're going to have a great prize, a pair of tickets to see Chris Tucker at Bayou Music Center November 4th. So that's coming up at 8 o'clock this morning, the Rapid Fire Quiz. 104.1 KRBE. Hello. All right, let's hit it. Time for Rule and Ryan's Great Call. All right, another telemarketer turnaround? Yes. Yeah, so here's what happens. They call my phone, I hit record, and then you get to hear the results of it. Now, <laughs> I did not say one statement over and over again like we've been doing. Mm-hmm. I, this time, I thought I'd, I'd take them for a little ride. They took me for a ride of fear. <laughs> like, well, why do they think you're going to die? Exactly. So what you're going to hear is when I hit record and they're trying to sell me on final expenses, as in cremation, as in funeral. Oh, my God. And this is what the gentleman had to say to me here on the Rule and Ryan Show. Tell me your age. How old are you? 66 years old, sir. 66 means you are perfectly qualified, man. So can you please tell me your zip code in the state of California? 90210. <laughs> oh, all right, thank you so much. Really uh, do you have a valid saving or checking account so that we can provide some discount on the basis of account? Oh. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. That's pretty much all the information I needed to verify. So please stay online. I will connect your call with my product specialist, all right? Okay. Hey, thank you so much for holding. My name is Cody Eskins, Final Expense Product Specialist. How are you? Am I going to die? <laughs> Who said that? The gentleman before you said I'm going to die and he needed to speak to you. <laughs> no, ma'am. This is not about die, anything about... Yeah, this is about your final expenses like that. God forbid, whenever you are passed away, you know, this is the nature. We all have to die one day. No. no this is the nature. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. I have too much to live for. And I have a puppy and a pool. <laughs> well, I wish you will live more. I yes. don't want you to die. I oh, don't want God. you to die. Oh, God, me either. You know, there's a song about it. That's, yeah, I want to live forever. Baby, just tell me my name. I don't remember the lyrics. It was quite some time ago. I think it was Dolly Parton. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But let me tell you, we don't want you to die. You, you know? Just, you're not taking care of whenever, whenever the times come. At the end, you have, uh, you will be covered. Your funeral diver or the cremation, whatever you want, will be covered. Oh, God, you're going to burn me up. Oh, God, you're unmercifully, it's like an effigy. It's, you're going to put me on. Oh, they switched me Hello? off. Hello? Hello, yeah. Hi. The, I was talking Hello. to the gentleman. He was. He told me I was going to die, and then he put me in touch with you, and so now here we are, and I'm scared and lonely, and I would like to pet a puppy. No, ma'am. Uh, they are not asking that you are going to die. They are just showing you options, but you are just kidding with them. That's why he's hang up, all right? Oh, no, I'm not kidding with him. I'm just having a good old time today. Yes, ma'am. You, I'm, they are not asking that you are going to die, but you know that cost of funeral has increased day by day so that you can get a better coverage. Yes, I do have covers when I'm cold, of course. <laughs> the, where are you? Is it cold there? So can I can I will connect your product specialist again? Please do, because the other gentleman was confused. He said he was going to cremate me, and he was waiting for me to die. Well, uh, so please stay online. I will connect you right, okay? Wait, so you can't do it for me? You sound handsome and kind, and I bet you have a puppy as well. Oh, oh man, that was it, y'all. He was through with me. I just wanted a puppy. I don't know why I wanted a puppy that day. They're going to burn me up. As an effigy. <laughs> it's called a telemarketer turnaround. Now, you can always submit someone in your as a friend or family to be pranked. Uh, KRBE.com forward slash prank call requests. Well done. Okay, so tomorrow around this time, we're doing Roland Ryan's Roses. We thought we'd open the lines right now. You didn't need us for Roses. 
Yep. How did you catch your cheater? We're going to open the lines right now. 713-390-KRBE. That's 713-390-5723. Bring it. Come on, because 7 o'clockers. there's so many ways to catch someone cheating. And we know that there's a lot of social media cheating now. But there are some interesting ways we know that you've caught someone. You know, like Ryan said, you didn't need Rulin' Ryan's roses. All right, we're going to hear from you. How'd you catch your cheater next on the Rulin' Ryan Show? You busted them on your own, so pick up your phone. How do you catch a cheater on the Rula and Ryan Show? 104.1 KRBE. Now, don't forget, Thursdays at 7 o'clock, it's Rula and Ryan's Roses. In this case, you did not need us. You caught your cheater on your own. So let's start with Carrie on line four. Carrie, welcome to the Rula and Ryan Hi. Show. Hey. So Hello. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Was this a husband, boyfriend, or what? This was my husband, This bullet, my now ex-husband. Your now ex-husband. Yeah. All right, so take us through yeah. this. So it was Christmas of 18, and I was doing some shopping on Amazon for our kids. It was my second marriage, so he had two kids. Mm-hmm. And I was doing a little Christmas shopping on Amazon, and I went to check out, and it listed the last used address, and it was some random woman I'd never heard of. And Uh-oh. so that was my first inclination, and I became my own investigator and I discovered stuff on PayPal. Oh, and oh. I just started searching. What did you find um, on PayPal? Discovered... Hang on yeah. a second. How much did so you find I on found... PayPal? So I found like a thousand dollars here, five hundred dollars here, six hundred dollars here to like four different women. Oh. Um, and then so when I found that, then I went to the jewelry store where he would get my jewelry, where he got my wedding ring, where we got his. And I acted like, you know, hey, I'm getting a divorce. I want to know um, the total of all my jewelry so I know the credit I'll have at the store. Can you print everything out for me? Ooh, look at you. And there were, yeah, there were tens of thousands of dollars <gasps> worth of jewelry mm-hmm. that was not that was not mine. Tens the time that we of were thousands? Is he a wealthy man? <laughs> He, yeah, he was. Uh-huh. He yeah. was. He was. <laughs> I took care of that. <laughs> yeah. So you find yeah, tens no, of thousands was. of dollars. He was. I did. Yeah, I did. I became my own investigator. I built my case. I got a lawyer. Uh, it was, you know, four women that I discovered. And, um, yeah, it just, our, my, you know, I have a daughter. She's now just started her senior year today at Stratford, actually. Oh, that's a great and, school. And, um. That is a great school. That's where my and daughter went to that school. It's a fantastic school. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember hearing you say that. But, um, you know, I had to do, because I had stopped working, and mm-hmm. I thought he was this great man. I never thought he'd do something like that. But oh. um, he did a lot. And in the discovery process of our divorce, there were nine women. Oh, oh, my God. Damn. And, Carrie, you told me so, there were other extravagant gifts that he bought as well, right? Yes, yes. So I discovered I got in, like, I'm not one that, like, searches and snoops. I've never been like that. But once I found something, I just started going. So I got into his email, and he had bought a loft for one woman. He bought a car for another woman. Oh, my God. Um, he had gone on trips with women. Well, how did he, um, first of all, let me back up a second. You said he went on trips with women. How was he able to justify his absences with you? Well, he said that he was going on a hunting trip with guys from work, oh. and then he would he would buy me like a trip to go visit one of my friends in Wales. Well, that was just a way to get me away. Oh, so he's keeping you so occupied he, while he's messing around. Yes, yeah. And so once I found everything out, I mean, I was just, you know, it's true. Like, <laughs> hell hath no fury like a woman's horn. Like, truly, it was just. You know, the whole uh, my daughter and I, our whole world turned upside down, and I so built sorry. my case. Oh and, no, it's and okay. I have Thank a question, you, but we, yeah. Now, did you reach out to any of these women, women, and uh, did you even have their contact info? Um, I did reach out to them. I found them on Facebook, and I just to protect myself. I didn't say I, you know, I didn't act crazy. I just yeah. said, "This is my husband. Go find somebody else to hustle." Oh, wow. And so these are all sugar all babies. Did, or did they yeah. think they were in a relationship with him? Yeah, actually, one of them, um, I found out later, uh, he was telling them that we were already divorced oh. and that we were, that 
they were engaged and they were looking at rings. Oh, my God. So as a warning to the women here in Houston, what did you learn out of this experience that you are going to take with you? Um, do not ignore any red flags. Wow. Do not, don't turn a blind eye thinking, you know, everything's, it's fine. It's fine. It's, if you have a feeling, because looking back, there were things, um, I was always a very forgiving, very patient person. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, looking back, there were things that should have set off an alarm and, and it didn't. So. Right. Don't ignore red flags. I hope you, you haven't uh, been soured on all men just because of his, you know, actions. No, no. I mean, it was a healing process, and um, I'm definitely more particular about who I date. If I see a red flag, mm-hmm. I'm done. You know, but I'm I'm dating. Well, good. Um, yeah, I'm def I'm I'm dating. It's interesting dating when you're 44, <laughs> but you know. Um, well, I, I thank you. Thank wanted, you for yeah. sharing your yeah. story in the morning. Because you're going to open up other people's eyes, too. Some, I am guarantee you somebody's listening right now, and they're saying, oh, my God, my husband's doing the same thing. So thank you for sharing your story. All right, so we're going to go to Trisha next. Yes. All right. Trisha, welcome to the Roland Ryan Show on 104.1 KRBE. How'd you catch your cheater? So I was, um, so he bought me a tablet when I was pregnant with my oldest son. Um, a year later, we got married when I was pregnant. Um, a year later, you know, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and he's working. And I'm, you know, playing games on my tablet while our son's napping. And I get this notification saying, like, you know, oh, hey, there's a new email. And it was an email address I'd never heard of that he had. And I handled all the bills and stuff at home. So I go click on it. He's horrible about remembering passwords. So he had the password saved, like, automatically. Oh, my God. So so I sign into it, and sure enough, the only emails he was getting on that was, um, like, for cheating app, like Cougars for Life. Um, I can't even think of any of the other ones. So the algorithm is picking all these cheating things. Yes, yeah, and then I finally, you know, I saw because he got notifications if he got a message on the app. And mm-hmm. there was one night he was supposed to come with me to my sister's graduation at Car- College Park High School. Uh-huh. And he ended up being really late. And there was actually messages between a girl, and he was meeting up with her at a, at a hotel right there in the woodland. Oh, no. And then he came to have dinner with us afterwards. Ooh. Oh, and and wait, God. and you, when he showed up for dinner, you already knew what he had done? I didn't know yet. I okay. didn't find out until a week later. A week oh. later, okay, because you went yeah. back and investigated utilizing that um, that tablet that he yeah, yeah. Had and set he up. had no idea, yeah, he had no idea or anything like that, and then that's when I finally like busted him on it. How did you figure out the hotel? Like he had been at a hotel right before your dinner? Because he was, because he was when he was emailing the girl, he was like, "Well, I need to be in the woodlands around this time." You know, where would you like to meet? Mm-hmm. And they picked to meet at one of the hotels right there. Uh, oh, in the Woodlands, God. close to where the Woodlands Pavilion is. How so sick to your stomach was. were you when you when you realized that he had just been with somebody oh, else? Oh, I was I was a knot. I sent my mom a screenshot of oh, God. what was going on, and she was like, "Are you sure it's not fake?" Like, we had just gotten flooded during the tax day flood, mm-hmm. and so like we were already like homeless at the time, oh, which God. ended up being a blessing in disguise. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you didn't um, have to stay with him. Yeah, we had nothing to fight over. Now, um, I, I asked I asked our, our last caller this. And what, what did you take from this experience? What can you share with the rest of the um, Houston audience? Whenever you have a gut feeling, like if he says he has to work late and it just seems off or anything like that, follow it. Wow. Yeah, just, that's what Rolo that always says that. Follow your gut feeling. And yeah. But at that yeah. same time, he was kind of a dumbass, and he set up this this email address on this tablet, then gave it to you, dummy. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah, because he, he, I, I was always technically challenged at the, like, at the time. You know, yeah. I've gotten better with doing all that. Mm-hmm. But he set it up with his email and stuff, so it was all tied on there. And like I said, he saved his password, so I was able to log in, no problem. Oh, my God. Another thing that guys like to do, uh, they don't realize, they forget to do, is that all their devices are usually linked. If you've got an Apple product, your iPad, yeah, your yeah. iPhone. Well, I think that's what happened. It was his Google account that he was logged in on. And since on his Google account on his phone, he had this Yahoo email address. Oh. So all of that ended up being saved on the tablet. Wow. 
All right. Now we know what to look for. Thanks for sharing. I really appreciate that. And I I, I hope you're doing better now, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with a great man. Been with him for six years. I have two more little ones. It's it's awesome. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing and picking up the phone and calling us to of tell course, us about that. Thank you, guys. That. I listen to you guys every morning. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank have you. a great day. We will go to line seven now here on the Rula and Ryan show on 104.1 KRBE. We have Dawn on the line here talking about a mechanic in her life. Good morning, Dawn. Good morning. I love you guys. Well, thank you, Don. How'd you catch your cheater? Well, that was before we had any of the great electronics that we do today, but I always believed in we needed routines, and every payday we did the same thing. If he liked um, uh, dinner from the night before, I'd pack it, and I'd bring it to him at lunchtime, or on paydays, I'd go and pick up his check, go cash it, and buy his lunch. How sweet of you. I love that. Yeah, and on this one particular day, he called me right before lunchtime, and he said, look, I won't be there for lunch. Um, I have to go take a customer back to their job. And I knew that that was not a policy back in the day with Montgomery Wards. And oh, he, he worked I at Montgomery like, Wards, and he right, had to take he was a, a client? was a mechanic at Montgomery Wards, yes. He's a mechanic at Montgomery Wards. i got to take right. a client back. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I, so I was like, yeah, no. I loaded up the kids, which I had three children at that time, mm-hmm. um, and went to his job. And at the last minute, his sister was like, oh, I want to come. I want to come. And I was like, okay, because she lived with us. She was pregnant. Oh, wow. And pulled up to his job. And instead of going parking by the shop like I normally did, mm-hmm. I went into the front door. Okay. And as soon as I did, they started calling his name. But, you know, at shops, they usually call the mechanics by their last name if there's somebody else there that uses the Uh same first name. Were they warning him? Oh, yeah, they were warning him. And I walked through, went straight to the waiting area, and she was sitting there, which happened to be a girl that I was trying to help her get clean and sober. She was dating a friend of mine who was a sergeant for DPS, and we had just recently had them over for dinner. Well, oh. he came running out. She ran into the women's bathroom, locked herself in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> he, came, he came out, and he was like, let's go home and talk about this. And I'm taking off my jewelry. I'm taking off my vest. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to talk about this all oh, right, she's about right to go here in. right now. Oh, oh my and, God. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like, yeah, no, you can get in the car. I mean, because I only had a, a you know, it's a little car, so there was already three kids, uh-huh. three car seats, and his sister. And I was like, yeah, you can cram your butt in there, but I'm going to get her out of the bathroom. But she would not come out. Ooh, you're, be- so, you're, you're beating on the door? Yep, I was beating on the door. Oh. And so oh. we left, and I dropped the kids off at home with his sister. And mm. me and him went to a hotel because he said, you know, he wanted to work through it. And I was like, okay. And I'm thinking, yeah, no, you're full of it. And I was like, okay. So we went to a hotel. We talked all day, all night. And I said, okay, I'm going to give you a break. This is your one shot. This is like your one shot shopping stop. Uh You screw it up. That's it. And sure enough, he did. He screwed it up. How do you you screw it up? He was cheating again? Yeah. he he, he, His Mm. sister was his personal reference. And she happened to have to go to the WIC office to get WIC benefits for this particular day. And mm-hmm. I was home, and I had decided to start an in-home daycare because I knew that was it. Our marriage was over, but I was just preparing myself. Yeah, you got to um, have a job yeah. opportunity, yeah. Yeah, so I started opening up an in-home daycare, and I, I was getting my license for it. I was there to set up Cisco for uh, deliveries for groceries and stuff for the daycare. Mm-hmm. He went to WIC and an apartment complex called and they said they were calling for a reference for his name and oh. they wanted to know how was how was his rental history and I said, oh, it was oh, excellent. No. <laughs> they wanted to know if he paid his bills on time and I said, oh, yes, he, you know, he did and oh he God. made plenty of money oh and God. she said, well, thank you, Elizabeth, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, just to let you know, this is not Elizabeth. This is Dawn. This is his wife. Oh. And, yes, he's been cheating on me. And so don't worry about warning him. He knows I've already caught him once. But I appreciate the fact that now I know the apartments that he's moving to and da 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 And, yeah. How, how quickly did you came, uh, did you pick up the phone and call him immediately? Oh, I didn't call him at all. I packed all his stuff and put it on the front porch. Oh wow! And when he saw yep. that, did he yep. try and did he try and fight for you or? or he... Yep, 
Oh, he did. Yep, he tried. He to tried. Fight. Oh, they always do. He, yep, he tried. I mean, you know, yeah, he tried, but it was uh, useless. And uh, we still talk. We still talk civilly now to this day, but our children are grown. You know, our, did the kids my, ever find my, out? Oh, yes, they all knew because the first visitation that I gave him, because through our divorce, he was given no visitation rights, no nothing. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, but I felt like when the kids got old enough and they wanted visitation, that I would let them have visitation. Mm-hmm. And the first time I did, he had a one-bedroom apartment, so he left our home, a house house, mm-hmm. ended up in a one-bedroom apartment with this woman. Um, she didn't stay off crack. Needless to say, she was on crack. Oh, that was yeah. She was on crack. Oh my god. Um, and she relapsed, and because I have thirty-five years clean and sober. Yeah. So she relapsed like immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, but our our oldest son is thirty-six, and our next our next child is thirty-two, and our youngest is twenty-seven. Um, but. The first time he had visitation, he piled them all up in bed with them. Oh, my Because he only had one bedroom. With a woman on crack. Correct. He should have lost all parental rights right then and there. You can't bring that around your kids. So, Don, I'm guessing guessing your advice is the same as the rest of the women to just trust your gut. I mean. Trust your gut. I don't don't believe that social media necessarily has to play a part in your gut. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't use social media a whole, whole lot. I mean, I listen to y'all every morning when I take my daughter to work. So she'll probably hear this on the podcast. (laughs) Oh, nice. Um, We appreciate that. But they are very very proud of me and what I did. I mean, I I raised my children by myself. You were both parents, yeah. You were mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. So good for you. I loved it. I wouldn't have had it any other way. I wouldn't have had it any other way. I have three amazing children and I thank God every day for them. And, you know, they already had their natural struggles in life. They're biracial. Mm-hmm. You know, one of my children is gay. And they are just so amazing because they have learned how to conquer every diversity that could slap them in well, the face. Well, they got it from and a they, strong mom. Yeah, and I'm very blessed that God made me that way <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, and I thank you guys for your stories because sometimes – Sometimes even as strong as I am, I need that little bit of oomph to keep going. Because you know you're not and, alone. We're all in this together. Right. So, I mean, I really appreciate you sharing. Anybody else that couldn't get through, you can always leave your comment on the Lister line, 713-278-VENT. We've got to move on to Celebrity Scoop. Now, coming up next, Kevin, what do you got for us? So, listen, uh, Madonna has rescheduled her Houston dates. <gasps> we'll have that for you. And did Beyonce re-acknowledge Lizzo? Did that actually happen? I'll have deets on that. Plus, Happy birthday to Caleb. His mom has been texting us all morning and hey. shaming me for not saying anything. Happy birthday, <laughs> Caleb. <laughs> Celebrity Scoop is next on The Rule and Ryan Show. I'm pleased to introduce Rule and Ryan's Celebrity Scoop on KRBE. All right, Celebrity Scoop is brought to you by Innovative Lasers of Houston. Special K, you're going to take the lead on this. I know that you love Madonna more than anything. Madonna! Okay, okay, I was going to my chair. Yes. Around to the other Running chair. around. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know. Not, not everyone is into Madonna. I understand that. But So I'll, I'll make this quick for you guys. But I, I was very upset when, um, it, unfortunately, she got sick and had to take some time off and reschedule in her entire tour. Yeah. So Madonna will come back to Houston. If you had tickets for those two days, it will now convert to March 28th and 29th of next year. Now, I believe that is a Thursday and Friday is what Booster told me. So I I think I'm now set up for a Friday so much better than the Wednesday night I think I was set up for before. Especially knowing that Madonna is notorious for coming on way late. She'll be wrecked on a work day. She has, and now i figured out a way on how to gauge that. And uh, I just go to one of the restaurants next to the um, venue. And then usually I know about 17,000 people inside. So one of those people (laughs) will text me, oh, here comes the DJ that's opening up or whatever. So that's one diva. Let's move on to another diva, Lizzo and Beyonce. Now, Beyonce gave Lizzo a shout out during her show in Atlanta, Georgia, while performing Break My Soul, the Queen's remix. Didn't she kind of like stop mentioning Lizzo after the 
the controversy? I, I hear that was a coincidence. You know, it's a lot. That whole song, she's like naming people after people after people. So I think it was just wrong place, wrong time when she messed up. On right. She well. left the name. Uh, she left Lizzo's name out of the show in Massachusetts. And there's like Ahmad said, there's so many different divas that she's shouting out in her song. Maybe she wanted to give other people extra love that day. Right. You know, but she's she's back in Beyonce's good graces mm-hmm. is is what the story is here. Now, the one other story that I think you were going to talk about, Ryan, I don't know if you're going to do this in your news, but about Apple, the yes. iPhone. Apple has set to issue a five hundred million dollar payout to iPhone users to settle a year old a years old lawsuit that accused the firm of deliberately slowing down customers' batteries. We knew it. We knew it all along. Now, here's the problem, though. Battery gate. If if you did not click on the email that said, you know, file a claim before October 6, 2020, you are SOL. Oh, no. Yes. So, you know, anytime I see something come across my email. Class or action mail, Kevin. Class action Kevin. Ah, <laughs> so, uh, class action Kevin. Absolutely. Because I have received uh, $70 from AT&T. Nice. I got Seven dollars from Google. I don't even remember what that one is about. It counts. Yeah, and uh, there was one of them a long time ago that I I think I got a significant, like one hundred and fifty dollars from one of these class action suits. So sometimes, y'all, you can you can get some money from these. Don't don't turn a blind eye to those emails. Smart. So here's uh, the phones included: the iPhone six, which you had up until last year. I had an iPhone (laughs) seven. Thank you, Ryan. (laughs) The six plus six S. Uh, the SE devices running operating uh, operating systems iOS ten point two point one or later, mm-hmm. and then the iPhone seven and iPhone yep. seven plus. So if you had those and you made your claim, you might get around sixty five bucks out of that. Ooh. That's pretty sweet, sixty five yes. bucks. Oh heck yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. I'm all about that. All right, hey yo, time for KRBE's Rule and Riot Show to tell you what's going down, 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 down. in H Town. All right, it is brought to you by. Duncan. Okay, Kyle Tucker, King Tuck, he is awesome. Hit a tie-breaking homer in the seventh inning. The Astros rally past the Marlins 6-5 to five last night. Now, the Astros are doing something cool. They're going to host their annual dog day during this weekend's series finale uh, against the, Mar- uh, the Mariners. Sorry about that. Uh, this is really cool. The first 500 fans with their dog in attendance will get an Astros dog calendar featuring some of Houston's top stars and a collection of adorable pups. So that's going down this weekend for the Astros. Oh, my God, y'all. I saw this on ABC 13. This is like the worst way to find out you've lost your job. ABC's Eyewitness News 13 asked HISD about the teacher cuts that they're doing. In a statement, the district said it had adequate staff, resulting in 21 independently contracted teachers from being terminated. Now, nearly two dozen of these contracted special edition teachers, here's how they found out. They logged into a meeting, and they were greeted by a 10-minute-long pre-recorded message the video shows Norma Castillo, an HISD employee, speaking to a larger group of people, explaining, hey, by the way, your job's been eliminated. You had to log on and watch mm. a video to find out that you've been terminated. That is and this, crap. You said 21 folks had to 21, go 21. 21 independently contracted teachers Jeez. terminated, and they get it via video message. These teachers are going through it. Like, man, I mean, it's they can't catch a break. Up. Yeah. All right. That's what's going down in H-Town. Now, coming up next, this was like the perfect storm because behind the scenes here, we've had a little illness kind of go through the building. Mm -hmm. So we're doing some Zoom. Eric's going to Zoom. Sam's going to Zoom. Rula, it's her first day of school with the kids. She wants to take her kids to school today. So we've got a very different kind of rapid fire lineup today. Mm -hmm. So. Irvin's joining us. Irvin. He's, he's been making us look so good on social media. Hey, step up days. to the mic, Irvin. Just just hop on a, a, a hey mic. So <laughs> how well do you think you know the trivia? You've watched us play this uh, game for a couple of months now. I answer the questions in my mind sometimes, and I do sometimes beat y'all. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. He thinks he knows it, but I bet you he doesn't know it quickly. <laughs> we'll uh, see. We'll see. Yeah, All right. Okay. So Bring we it. need three contestants at 713-390-KRBE. This is a pretty cool prize. Up for grabs, a pair of tickets to see Chris Tucker at Bayou Music Center November 4th. Three contestants at 713-390-KRBE. The Rule and Ryan Show Rapid Fire Quiz is next on 104.1 KRBE.